Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about the special right triangles. And the special right triangles are just special because they show up a lot. We see them in a lot of different types of geometric problems. And there's two types, the 45-45-90 triangle and the 30-60-90 triangle. And they're named by the size of the angles in the triangle. So let's start out by taking a look at the 45-45-90 triangle. Here we've got a picture of a square with a diagonal drawn. And when you draw that diagonal in the square, then you can see it creates a right triangle, actually two right triangles, that are 45, 45, 90 triangles. So what we want to do is we want to come up with an expression for the ratio of the sides of a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So let's say that this 45, 45, 90 triangle here, based on this square, let's say that the sides of the square are four, maybe four centimeters. And we want to come up with the length of the diagonal. And we're going to do that using the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And in this case, our value for c is the length of the hypotenuse. So Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So let's fill in the information we have here. 4 squared, it's this one leg, plus 4 squared equals c squared. Now we can solve this for the value of c. So we're going to have 16 plus 16 equals c squared, 32 equals c squared. I'm going to take the square root of each side, and that's going to give me c equals. Now, I could use my calculator and punch in square root of 32 and get a decimal number here, but instead of doing that, I want to keep my radical sign here, and I, I want to reduce the value under the radical. In other words, I want to try to find a perfect square under the radical, and I can see that there is a perfect square. 32 is equal to... 16 times 2, and 16 is a perfect square, which means I can take the square root of 16 out from under the radical sign. So the square root of 16 is 4, so I can pull that out of the radical sign, and I have that c is equal to 4 radical 2. All right, so if the sides of my square are 4, the, side, the two legs of my triangle are 4, then my hypotenuse is going to be 4 times the square root of 2. All right, well, let's try this same thing with a different size square. Let's say my sides of my square are now 10. Now, and again, I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. And I'm going to plug in all my numbers here and solve for c. So I've got 10 squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. And that gives me 200 equals c squared. Take the square root of both sides, and that gives me c equals the square root of 200. Again, I want to keep my radical, and I want to look for a perfect square in 200, and I can see that 200 is equal to the square root of 100 times 2. So again, I can take out the square root of 100, which is 10, and I'm left with c equals 10 times the square root of 2. So if the side of my square is 10, or the leg of my triangle is 10, then the hypotenuse is going to be 10 radical 2. And you may be able to see where this is going. Let's use one more. Let's say the side is going to be 7. I'm going to do the same thing. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That means I've got 7 squared plus 7 squared equals c squared. That's 49 plus 49. And let's see, that's going to give me... 98 equals c squared. I'm going to take the square root of each side. And let me see here. So square root of 98, I can divide that into, or I can rewrite that as square root of 49 times 2 equals c. And I can take out the square root of 49, and I've got 7 radical 2. Well, so it's not too hard to see what the relationship between the sides are Whatever the length of this side of the triangle is, the side of my 45, 45, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is just going to be that length times the square root of 2. So if my side is 4, my hypotenuse is 4 radical 2. If my side is 10, my hypotenuse is 10 radical 2, and so on. So, for a 45, 45, 90 triangle, if a leg of a 45, 45, 90 triangle is equal to 13, then the hypotenuse is just going to be 13 radical 2. If a leg is equal to 5, the hypotenuse is going to be 
5 radical 2. If the leg is equal to 1 half, the hypotenuse is going to be 1 half times radical 2. So in general, we can say that the ratio of the leg of a 45-45-90 triangle to the hypotenuse is going to be 1 to radical 2. That is, whatever the size of, the, whatever the length of the leg is, the hypotenuse is just going to be the square root of 2 times that value. And we, if we write it as the ratio of all three sides, that is, leg to leg to hypotenuse, then we would write it as 1 to 1 to radical 2. And that's usually how you hear that ratio expressed. The ratio of the three sides of a 45-45-90 triangle are 1 to 1 to radical 2. Well, the reason that this ratio is so handy to have is that it makes solving certain types of problems much easier. So take a look at example number one. I've got a picture of a 45-45-90 triangle. Since this is 90 and that's 45, I know this must be 45. So I've got a 45-45-90 triangle and I know the length of one of the legs. I would also like to find the length of the other leg and the length of the hypotenuse. Well, before I would have had to have used either the Pythagorean theorem or one of my trig ratios. Now, since I know the ratio of the lengths of the sides is 1 to 1 to radical 2, I can just write the answer. My other side is going to be 7. It's got to be the same length as this side. And my hypotenuse is just going to be 7 radical 2. And I'm done. Example number 2. Now here I'm given, again, another 45-45-90 triangle. But now notice I'm not given the length of one of the legs. Instead, I'm given the length of the hypotenuse. So I'm basically I can kind of go backwards since I know the hypotenuse is 19 times radical 2. I know the length of each one of the legs must be equal to 19. And again, I have my ratio 1 to 1 to radical 2. 19 to 19 to 19 radical 2. Now, example number three is a little bit more uh, challenging because in example number two, I had the length of my hypotenuse, and it was actually given to me in terms of the square root of two, which made it really easy to find the lengths of the legs. In example number three, I'm not given my hypotenuse in terms of radical two. I'm just given a regular whole number, which makes this problem a little bit, I have to do a little bit more work on this problem to find the lengths of the sides of my legs. Now. I'm going to leave this problem for you to do, but you actually have a number of ways. You have at least three different ways that you can go about solving this. And I'm going to give you a tip. It's often very tempting for students to say, oh, well, it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This side's 13, so this side must be 13 radical 2, and that's not correct. All right, so if you're tempted to just say the length of this side is 13 radical 2 and this is 13 radical 2, you've got to, have to do a little bit more work than that. But I want you to pick whichever of the three methods you want to use and you come up with X and Y. So I'll leave that one for you. Okay, the 30-60-90 triangle is the second of our special triangles. And just like we did on the 45-45-90 triangle, we want to come up with the ratio of the lengths of the sides of a 30-60-90 triangle. So we're going to start with this triangle, which is a, uh, an equilateral triangle, which means all of the angles are 60 degrees and all of the sides are congruent. And we're going to draw an altitude on this triangle. So that's 90 degrees. And this altitude divides the equilateral triangle into two congruent right triangles. And it also splits this 60 degree angle into two 30 degree angles. So essentially what I have here is I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, this triangle here on the left. Well, I'm going to call the length of this side of my 30, 60, 90 triangle, this piece right here, I'm going to call this x. In other words, this is the length of my short side of my 30, 60, 90 triangle. I'm going to call that x. And notice, if I call this length x, well, this length here is also going to be x. That means the whole length of this triangle is 2x. Well, since all three of these sides, it's an equilateral triangle, so all three of those sides are the same, that means the length of this side here is also 2x. And what I have here then is I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. 
I know the length of the short side here is x. The length of the long side is twice as long as the short side. And I don't yet know the length of this side. Well, I'm going to find the length of that side in terms of x, just like we did before with the 45, 45, 90 triangle. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem says a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And remember, c squared is my hypotenuse. So my hypotenuse, in this case, is 2x. Now, a and b are the lengths of my other two sides. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this my side a, and I'm going to call this my side b. So side a is x, x squared. And I'm just going to leave b, I'm going to call that b. B is what I'm trying to solve for. In other words, I want to know what's the length of side B in terms of X. And I'm going to find that by solving this equation for B. So here I have X squared plus B squared. And I've got 2X quantity squared. And if I raise 2X to the power of 2, then I get 4X squared. I want to bring all my X squares over here. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. That gives me b squared equals 3x squared. Remember, I'm solving for b, which means I want to take the square root of both sides. Square root of b squared is b. The square root of 3x squared, well, x squared is a perfect square, so I can take that out of my radical. And I have x times the square root of 3. And this is the answer that I'm looking for. Notice that what we've just shown is that the length of B, the length of this long side of the 30, 60, 90 triangle, is equal to the length of the short side times the square root of 3. Well, that, it turns out, let's say, and actually let's go ahead and take, let's do, uh, let's do this like we did before. Let's say we had a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And let's say that I knew the length of my short side was 7. What would be the lengths of the other two sides? Well, I know that the length of the hypotenuse is twice as long as the length of the short side. So the length of this hypotenuse must be 14. And I know that the length of this long side is equal to the square root of 3 times the short side. So this would be 7 times the square root of 3. And essentially what we've done is we've just found the ratio of the three sides of a 30-60-90 triangle. So for a 30-60-90 triangle, the ratio of the short leg to the hypotenuse is going to be 1 to 2. That is, the hypotenuse is always twice as long as the shortest side. The ratio of the short leg to the long leg is going to be 1 to radical 3. The ratio of all three sides, if we write it as the ratio of the short leg to the long leg to the hypotenuse, then we're going to have 1 to square root of 3 to 2. And more commonly, you see this ratio written like this, the ratio of the short leg to the hypotenuse to the long leg, which is 1 to 2 to radical 3. And if you write it in this way, you just need to remember that this first number represents the short leg. The second number represents the hypotenuse, and the third number represents the long leg. So let's take a look at how we might use this ratio in some example problems. OK, so example four. I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's 90, that's 60, so this must be 30. And I know the length of my short side. Now, Keep in mind, the reason I know that this is the short side is because it is opposite the smallest angle. So my shortest side is 5. Well, when I've got a 30, 60, 90 triangle and I know the length of the shortest side, I can just use my ratio, which is 1 to 2 to radical 3. And remember, this is the short leg. Well, if I know the ratio, if I know the value of the short leg, then I know the hypotenuse is just twice as long as the short leg. So my hypotenuse then must be 10. And I know my longest leg, which is this leg here, is going to be the square root of 3 times the length of the short leg. So this is going to be 5 radical 3. 
And I've just found the lengths of those two sides of the triangle without having to use a trig ratio or the Pythagorean theorem. I've just used this ratio and I can write down my answers. Let's take a look at example number five. Now here, I have another 30, 60, 90 triangle. But in this case, I don't know the length of my short side or my long, excuse me, my short leg or my long leg. I know the length of my hypotenuse. Well, with a 30, 60, 90 triangle, remember, the hypotenuse is always twice as long as the shortest leg. Since this is the leg that's opposite my 30 degree angle, I know this is my shortest leg. If the hypotenuse is twice as long as this leg, that means this leg must be 16. Now that I know the short leg, I also know the long leg because the ratio between the short leg and the long leg is 1 to square root of 3. So if this is 16, then this must be 16 radical 3. So you can see in these problems involving a 30, 60, 90 triangle, once you know the length of your shortest leg, then the other two values, they just kind of fall out. This is 16, this is 32, and this is 16 radical 3. Now, if you have a problem like example number six, it becomes a little bit more complicated because notice, while I still have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, I don't know the length of my short side, and I also don't know the length of my hypotenuse. I only know the length of my longest side, and that longest side is the one that has the square root of three. So this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult to solve. In other words, I can't just write down that this side must be 9 radical 3 and this side must be 18. I know, in fact, that this is not equal to 9 radical 3 and this is not equal to 18 because this is not the shortest side. This is the longest leg. So once again, you're going to have to use one of the other methods for finding the lengths of the sides of a triangle. And I'm going to leave this example for you to do and we'll take a look at that one tomorrow in class.